Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris, with seven World Championship invites under my belt and a top eight finish as my best finish in the 2014 World Championships. And I'm going to take all this information that I've got from my time playing into today's episode where we'll be playing a team that was suggested by one of you fine people. It was Poker Smash who suggested a team based all around Gengar. So that's what we're going with today. We've got a few Pokemon that we don't regularly see in the new Series 7 format. We've put a team together around these Pokemon and we're going to be playing them in today's episode. As you can see, the team that we'll be featuring today is going to be Gengar, Whimsicott, Charizard, Bishop, a Rhyperia and a Dracovish. So we've got the GMAX Charizard. It's kind of going to be the centerpiece of the team. Now, the one thing I would say about the Gengar is that was a Pokemon that was requested, but it isn't really a Pokemon that you can build a team around. It's, it's just there's too many Pokemon in the format at the minute that make it very difficult for Gengar to perform, but I believe it can perform very well in a specific niche role and with combinations like Bishop that we've seen have good success in the past and then combine it with nice speed control and some other options here. I feel like the team can perform pretty well and it's going to be interesting to see how these maybe older faces in the format kind of perform in series seven so as always there will be a poker paste down below in the description there will be a rental code at the end of the episode if you guys would like to try this team out but if nothing else it's going to be a little bit educational it's going to be a little bit fun and it'll be nice to give gmax charizard a run out after not really seeing too much of it in series seven so without further ado friends let's get into our first one today so up first we've got a team of urshifu raichu Zapdos, Metagross, Regieleki, and Tapu Koko. Now, initially, you would think, okay, not the best team to see if you've got Charizard, because obviously the Regieleki going to outspeed us, and the Tapu Koko going to outspeed us, and cause us a lot of issues. And even with the Tailwind, Charizard is not going to be able to get the jump on something like Regieleki. So, speed control here is really important for us, and obviously the Alolan Raichu as well does take advantage of that electric train, but we do have Whimsicott to provide that tailwind support that we kind of can take advantage of. We also have Rhyperia as well on this team with the choice band, and that can actually be a real asset to us. It can do a lot of damage to my opponent and cause my opponent all sorts of issues. Now, I think the, the big thing to realize here is that Whimsicott, if we lead it, my opponent's probably going to lead off with the Raichu and have that fake out support, which is going to mean that Whimsicott could get taken down early on, although they're going to have to lead something like the Galarian Zapdos, or maybe, maybe the, the Metagross to actually take the Whimsicott down. So I think we're not in a bad spot, um, but we're not in the greatest spot either. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll go Whimsicott, um, go Gengar, go Charizard, and we'll go right here because I feel like those four can kind of do a really good job against my opponent's team. Um, it's going to be an interesting one, obviously. Like with this team as well, it's not something I would jump on immediately as a competitive team, but it's got a lot of elements within the team that can work very well together. I think like the Whimsicott with the Tailwind is probably something that is being used, but probably a bit overlooked at the minute. And I think something that can be very, very powerful in this current format, you know, that instant Tailwind, the ability to actually taunt and shut down opposing tornadoes which is probably the more reliable pokemon that people are kind of leaning towards at the minute so it's got a lot of it's got a lot of options that it can go for here so we do see my opponent lead out with the raichu and that galarian um zapdos we do have to worry about helping hand as well but we do have the option where we can bring in Rhyperia straight off the bat and we could go for an icy wind the only issue going for an icy wind would be um <clears throat> if we go for that we proc the defiant ability on the zapdos and there's also the risk if we go for a shadow ball we could lower the special defense on the zapdos so the best option for us here is going for that sludge bomb into the zapdos or going for the shadow ball into the raichu but i think we'll we'll opt for damage onto the zapdos here I'm not too worried about the raichu it could fire off a psychic into gengar but at the same time i think you, you really want to be trying to mitigate the the tailwind support here that we're, we've got potentially coming out from the Whimsicott. We are going to see the Zapdos actually go for its max. Unless it is the Raichu. I think it is the Zapdos, yeah. We'll probably see an Airstream and that'll be into our Rhyperia. So I'd, I'd definitely expect Fake Out. That's that's the thing I would, I would expect here because you want to remove the the uh, the Whimsicott. Um, yep. Okay. 
we do get the sludge bomb off into the Zapdos. Not really doing too much, but hoping for that poison, which we don't get, unfortunately. And there's the airstream into Rhyperior, which we take pretty comfortably. Now, we do need to worry about um, a potential Max Knuckle coming out from the Zapdos this next turn, which, which definitely will be a bit of an issue, um, especially because uh, we don't have Protect on Rhyperia. Um, the one option that we do potentially have is we can get Whimsicott back onto the field now and go for a Shadow Ball into the Raichu. Now, there could be a little bit of an issue here where my opponent kind of doesn't go for the Max Knuckle and decides to go for the airstream into the Gengar to try and get a bit more speed control. The issue is now um, they're going to get to plus two and that will match our Tailwind, which makes it a little bit more difficult for us. Wow, we're going to see a Surf from the Raichu. Break Sashes on everything, um, which isn't ideal. Cursed Body does disable the Surf, which makes things a bit easier if we do want to get the Rhyperia back onto the field. And we're going to see a Max Darkness and it's going to be into that Gengar. Okay. I mean, either way, it's not too bad because we don't see the speed boost there from the Zapdos and it does open the door for us to get uh, Charizard onto the field. Um, and that's a big thing what we want to do now. Um, and my opponent's max turns are nearly gone. So the Charizard's going to be our, like our, our pretty much a win con in this one. Um, so we're going to have to get a Tailwind up. <sighs> right. I don't know if we're going to be able to get... A sunny day up but we will try we'll try um, and we probably want to go for just a protect here I think yeah we'll just go for a protect because what we can do the following turn is get Rhyperia onto the field and Rhyperia in the tailwind it's gonna outspeed a, a lot of things on my opponent's team because uh, we are very speedy Rhyperia um, and the combination of Charizard Rhyperia is a really good kind of board position for this team in particular. That's kind of what you'll kind of get the Tailwind up and get those two next to each other on the field. So you can Choice Band Earthquake and then just Heat Wave or go for the G-Max um, attacks as well. So that's that, they're nice options. We are going to see the Airstream. It is going to be into the Whimsicott here. So they are going to be able to match our speed control uh, with, with the Tailwind. Um, but... Yeah, we don't take that, which is a little bit unfortunate, but not the worst. Um, like I say, it would be nice to be able to get the sun up to get that G-Max, like the, the solar power boost, but it's not going to happen. Even with the Cobble Berry, we just can't take that. But we do get Rhyperior onto the field, and we do have Lightning Rod on it, so it means that the Cursed Body uh, from that Raichu uh, will come into effect. And it's not going to be able to, to take us down with the Surf. But the problem is that if we don't outspeed the Zapdos now with Charizard, because I would imagine it is a speed tie, um, then we are in a bit of trouble. So we'll go for the Earthquake. And we'll go for... Huh, do we max here? Or do we just go Heat Wave? I think we max now, actually. We could go for an Airstream. Or Airstream... I think Airstream is not a bad option. Because then, whatever comes in, at least we've got kind of a speed advantage on them when the Tailwind does end. Because the Tailwind is inevitably going to end. We just need to win the speed tie here against the Zapdos. they got two Airstreams up, so they're plus two. We've got the Tailwind up, so we're plus two. And it's all going to come down to a coin flip. Hopefully Charizard can pull through and get the air... Uh, get win the speed tie. That that will that will put a, pull us right back into the game, 100%. We do. There we go. Okay, so that Tailwind coming in super handy. The Zapdos going down. We get the speed boost, uh, which will put right here to plus three, which will definitely make uh, us faster than that Raichu. And uh, we'll be able to get an Earthquake off, take that down. And then we're in an amazing position. And this is what I'm talking about before, where we can get this board position. Wow. Right here, still not outspeeding the Raichu on plus three. That's not ideal. We do see an expanding force, um, but that's, that's all right. We can deal with that. Um, but Charizard going to be able to... It will outspeed Regieleki now, for sure. Um, so depending on what my opponent has... Oh, it's Metagross and Urshifu. We're, like, so fine with this. We just Earthquake and Airstream the Urshifu. And it's, it's pretty much done. Yeah. 
So this is quite a nice example. And we haven't really used utilized the Charizard's fire type in as much as we wanted to. But I mean, yeah, getting rid of that front two, which did cause us a lot of issues. Uh, so fair play to my opponent there. But I mean, that, that back two... And that's the kind of board position we keep referring to, you know, that's the, the what we want to achieve throughout the game. It's that board position against certain teams. And obviously, the team's got a lot of different mods, so we'll try and feature a few of those as we go on to our next one here as well. Okay, up next, we have Glastria, Spectria, Rotom Heat, Reggie, Alecki, Urshifu, and Clefairy. So we've got quite a few different things going on here. Obviously, that the first thing that jumps out to me is the Spectre and the Clefairy lead because that is going to be very difficult to deal with. They're very difficult to manage just because of that redirection there with the Clefairy that supports this, the, the Spectre that can do so much devastating damage but on the one hand it is a bit of an issue the other hand we have got Gengar and Bishop now if my opponent decides to lead Urshifu Clefairy here that becomes a little bit more tricky for sure but we they still have ways because what we want to really do is concentrate down on getting rid of the Clefairy first and then the rest of the team can come in and kind of deal with the other Pokemon there I don't really feel like there's a trick room mode per se on my opponent's team the other thing we need to worry about a little bit is um, the, the the Rotom Heat because that is going to be a big issue for Charizard um, now I think Charizard Rhyperia again is going to be very good but the problem is, I think we might be better off going for something like Whimsicott up top. Oh, well, actually, let's go. Let's go Gengar. Let's go Whimsicott. Let's go Charizard and let's go Rhyperia. Yeah, let's go with that. I have to fit those four Pokemon in because I feel like we need the Rhyperia here to deal with both the Regieleki, take away that kind of threat that it poses to the, the Charizard and also get rid of the Rotom Heat. Like without the Rotom, uh, without the Rhyperia here, we're kind of relying on Gengar. And Gengar is probably a Pokemon that's going to go down very early in this game after we've utilized it for that speed control and things like that. So it gets pretty tricky quite, quite early on. Okay, well, we do see Regieleki and the Urshifu from my opponent. Um, I... I I don't mind this too much because we've got the option to go for the Tailwind straight away. Um, and we could just go Icy Wind, which really just then enforces the fact that that Charizard could come on the field and really start doing some work. And I think that's not really a bad idea because then if we do lose Gengar, that's not the worst thing in the world. And again, we want to try and set that bold position up for the late game. I mean, we could go for a Moonblast as well with Whimsicott. Just Moonblast the Urshifu and Icy Wind and then Tailwind the next turn. It's not a bad option as well. Uh, we probably still lose Gengar here um, and potentially through... I think we go Tailwind this turn because we don't want to take a Sucker Punch and a, a Electro Web. Like, we can take this, but we'll get our Tailwind up now. And then we can... Get our icy wind off. Hopefully. Oh, we might just lose Gengar. Oh, no, we do. Okay. This is perfect. And now, Whimsicott going to be in a nice position to take down the Urshifu the next turn, if it is sashed. Which, I don't know if it is. It might be scarfed. Maybe scarfed. Um, and there's the Electro Web. Okay, that's kind of mitigating our icy wind. But, we've got a Tailwind up. We're still plus two. Still in a great spot. Now we could bring in, I think we do bring in Charizard here, and I think we switch hard switch straight to Rhyperia. Because what's my opponent going to bring in, like, for the Urshifu? Probably the Rotom Heat, I'd imagine. So we could go for the G-Max Wildfire. Like, that's an option, like, G-Max Wildfire into Reggie Alecki. Uh, yeah, G-Max Wildfire into Regieleki, and I think we got Moonblast into Urshifu, and that should deal with the Urshifu anyway. Sucker Punch is always going to be an issue, uh, because we know that Urshifu is locked into it. So it makes sense, like, we're going to take an attack from it, whatever we do. We don't have, like, Ally Switch or Redirection here to kind of get around that, so it's better if we remove the threat that, you know... So we don't get doubled into here. We're going to take one attack at least. So we should be all right taking a sucker punch anyway with Charizard. Yeah, there it is. 
The main thing is that we get the, the wildfire off to get rid of the Reggie Dragon, uh, the Reggie Alecki now, and then we start the G Max wildfire. The Moonblast should take down the Urshifu. And we'll just note that my opponent is like ranked at the minute. I know it's early ladder, but they're ranked 51st on the ladder. So uh, if we can clinch a win here, this is a, pretty good. And I think the team's performing pretty well. I think it's just having that understanding of, of maybe the hyper offensive nature of it and kind of making decisions where you get like one attack off or you get the alternative off and each each option is going to pay off for you overall if you if you get what i mean okay well, we're going to see spectre and the clefairy come in um and we need to we need to get rid we need to get rid of the spectre we need to go for the sunny day Sunny day, get the solar power going because then if we do see redirection from the Whimsicott, at least then we're going to be able to remove it from the field and we should, hmm, we'll probably not take a help in hand Shadow Ball, I don't think, from the Spectre. That's always the option, but I mean, we have targeted the Spectre, so if they went helping hand to be kind of sneaky to try and get around us possibly targeting the fairy that's always something i would try to go for your opponent can catch you out with maybe an icy wind but in this situation we don't really we're not relying on that too much so it's always good to target the big pokemon that's the the, the immediate threat at least spectre is not the most bulky of pokemon either so if we can get the sun up and get an attack into it then that'll be amazing there we go okay so sun up and char should be able to and it's gonna be interesting to see how much we do here it's gonna be interesting i'm having doubts i should have targeted the spectre i'm sure we did yeah we did we did and you know what i'm like talking and i'm like did we did we target it we should have done <laughs> and then it goes into the clefairy and i'm like oh come on but we do we target the right slot so that's good we do lose charizard but that's that's fine the g max wildfire damage now is going to be enough uh to kind of support um the, maybe the rest of this team. Oh, I don't know. The Grim Nair boost there makes it very difficult. Uh, and we need to get... Okay. Well, yeah, it's going to go down the next turn. Whatever happens. We just need to remove the Clefairy from the field. The problem is, I don't know if Rhyperia... Let's just have a quick look. I don't know if it's going to outspeed. We need to be over 100. Oh, 100 max. Oh, come on. This is where we need to be one point faster uh, with Rhyperia. So, I think... It's going to be a speed tie. And we're going to see follow me. And I think... I think Rock Slide's fine. And I think we go... Because the Spectre is literally going to go down this next turn to the G-Max Wildfire damage and the recoil from the Life Orb. So whatever it does, I think we've won this one. If we win the speed tie or not, we probably lose Rhyperia if we don't. And there's a Max Quake, which is fine. Yeah. And I don't think Leferi's got a way to deal with uh, Whimsicott. And we're quite a bulky Whimsicott as well. We've got the, the Cobra Berry. Like, I had to put the Focus Sash on Gengar. I felt like it, that was it had to have that item. Without it, it's pretty... It's it's very vulnerable in this format. It's very vulnerable anyway. You've got things like Spectre, you've got things like Dragapult that make it very difficult for Gengar to perform, but I still believe it can perform a decent enough role. It's got a good spit. It's got a good base speed. Uh, it's got very good attack. So I, you know, it's a it's a very good Pokemon. Now this will just come down to if the Clefairy has an attack, like Icy Wind or something. Then yeah, I don't know if it's going to be able to to to, to finish us off. But the G Max Wildfire damage here, so is going to help us out a bunch. Uh, we don't need the Tailwind support, so we can just Moonblast, Moonblast, Moonblast until we win this one. Hopefully win it, anyway. Let's see. Hopefully the Clefairy hasn't got, like, some sneak attack that, um... It's got Moonblast as well. That could be a little bit... That could, that could slow us down a bit. They got Icy Wind. Okay. They're going to need to Icy Wind us quite a bit to, uh... Yeah, and I mean, we take that pretty comfortably. Uh, the bulk there helping us out even though the clefairy not the strongest of pokemon and i think yeah a couple more moon blasts are going to do the job but the g max wildfire like i said is going to help us out 
in abundance to pick up the knockout here and uh, there's the, the the battle cancelled so two wins today friends and two really good examples i think of how the team can perform well like i've said it's very hyper offensive it's got some odd picks but they're not weak picks i don't think i think they're very strong picks um so I think this team in general is definitely something I would recommend you all have a go with because I think the Pokemon that are in the team I think can work very well and GMAX Charizard really surprised me. We were on stream um, yesterday and I was talking about GMAX Charizard. It's not something that I enjoy playing personally or I haven't but when I built this team and I've started playing it I kind of started to be like okay well I, I'm seeing the value in it now. I'm seeing like I really kind of can get behind it and play it. So maybe if you were the same before then, then you try this team out and it might have the same effect. But definitely Charizard's great anyway, isn't he? Let's get on the Charizard train. Not that I wasn't on it already, but you know, we'll do it. Anyway, I'm going to throw up the rental team for you guys. I need to take down one of the teams that I have up. This team will be up for two weeks. So you'll have plenty of time to test this out. I have to take the Reggie Rock one down. Now, if if any of you out there, and I say this all the time, want this team put back up, I've got two other teams that I'll be putting onto another cart, so I will add this if you want this up, and then you can continue to play it. Um, I love the Reggie Rock team. I think it's one of the best teams that have made this format. Uh, honestly, I think it's great. So if you do want it, let me know down in the comment section, and I will throw that up for you. Don't make it public and we need to make room. I hate this. I hate that we've only got so many slots for, for rental teams. I wish we just had unlimited slots. It would be great. It would be definitely a feature I would I would throw forward to Game Freak for the next generations because I just think, especially when you're like making teams a lot of the time, you've got so many Pokemon in the format. You want to have a lot of teams to help out other players. You want a lot of teams to just test and things like that. I think it would just be a good facility to have uh, a lot of and also the ability to record battles. But friends, there it is. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have enjoyed it, please remember to drop a like on the video. It takes two seconds and it does so much to help the video out and you don't know how much I appreciate it as well. If you are new to the channel and you've enjoyed today's episode, do consider hitting the subscribe button for more of this sort of content and other Pokemon content that we do here on the channel. And um, Leave your comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on the team. Let me know your thoughts on Gengar. Question of the day. What do you think about Gengar in this current format? And what do you think about GMAX Charizard in this current format as well? I would love to hear your opinions on those. And uh, we'll leave it there. Have a great rest of your day. Whatever you're up to, friends. Stay safe. Be kind to each other. And I'll see you all for the next one. So until then, take care and bye-bye.